Minecraft 1.19 has added a new item, the Recovery Compass, into the game, and it has a lot more functionality than you might think, so in this video I'll show how to find and use it. So to get the Recovery Compass, we need to raid the ancient city to find Echo Shards, and what you want to do this for the correct method is to drink a bottle of night vision, and then to basically very slowly crouch through the ancient city trying to find a chest. And I would suggest when raiding the ancient city, to bring with you some wool blocks, as well as some night vision potions, and some food, but other than that you don't actually need too much more, as of course armor would make sense, but oftentimes there's not very many mobs there, and so the real issue is just once you have summoned in the warden, maybe some armor could be useful there. Now here we found a chest that actually is rather lucky in the fact that there's not really any shriekers or skulk sensors around it, however there could still be some we can't see. So what I would suggest doing is placing wool blocks around it, at least on as many sides as you can, just to make it as safe as possible. You can even go to the opposite side of it that you can't really place blocks on, because there's already a block there, and just place some blocks here, so if there's a shrieker or a skulk sensor in any direction, this would be protected from that. So let's open this up now, and you can see we have in here five echo shards. Now we need a total of 8 echo shards to make the recovery compass, and something you may be asking is how rare is this interesting new item? Well the echo shard isn't too rare, there is a 29.8% chance for 1 to 3 echo shards, but the average is there being a 29.8% chance for there to be any echo shards in a chest, and if there are there'll be 1 to 3, and there can be multiple stacks with the same probability, just of course those will stack, so for instance getting 5 here wouldn't be as common as finding maybe 3 or 2. And there is no other place in the entire game outside of the ancient city loot chests where you can get echo shards, and so if you want to get the recovery compass, you unfortunately do have to raid this rather dangerous structure. Also, any chest in the ancient city has a chance to spawn in the echo shard at the same rate, except for one, which is the ice box chest, but unless you're finding that one, then you'll have a good chance for those echo shards. And let's say in this scenario, if we want to get up to that chest there, we could pile up with wool blocks because that won't give any vibrations that will cause a warden to spawn. And so we can rather easily pile up to here, and since there's absolutely no sensors within range, we can really easily open this up. It looks like we got very lucky here, and there are a total of five more echo shards in that chest, as well as, of course, some other loot. And so all you have to do is collect 8 of these, and once you've done that, you can leave the ancient city. Of course, if I were you, I would suggest getting all the chests that you can. Let's say you come to a chest in a scenario like this, where it's right next to the shriekers and the sensors. What you can do is you can place the wool blocks on every single side of it. Again, on the back side there as well, you can place some to stop the vibrations. You don't even have to place this many, just enough that from any angle those wouldn't travel. And then once we've done that, we can simply break this, or we can open it up, it doesn't really matter which, but generally breaking it is going to cause less signals. And so when we open this up and we break that, you can see we got in there some more of loot there, it doesn't look like there's any echo shards, but something that is kind of interesting is the echo shards have literally only one use in the entire game, and that use is to craft the recovery compass. Unlike most items, of course, there'll be several things, but with the echo shards, the only use is to craft the recovery compass. Also, the texture of this, you may notice, is based off of the amethyst shard texture, but other than that, that's about it that has to do with the echo shards. The next step is to mine four pieces of iron ore, and you don't actually need more than four, although you could of course mine more, making this a rather easy ingredient to get. And the other thing you want is a piece of redstone dust, and so we can mine that here as well, and of course if you're already in the ancient city getting yourself those echo shards, there should definitely be some of that nearby. And now that we've made our way outside of the cave, just smelt that iron ore into iron ingots, and then we can start crafting this. Alright, the iron has smelted, and you just want to craft a singular compass with these four pieces of iron and the one redstone. Now the crafting recipe is a compass in the center of the crafting grid, surrounded by echo shards on every side. That gives us the recovery compass. What's interesting is that recipe is the exact same as the map recipe, just with the echo shards instead of paper, as of course if it was sort of more like the compass recipe, we would just have echo shards on every side like that. Alright, we now have the recovery compass item, and you'll notice its little pointer on there is just going in a circle randomly, sort of like a normal 
normal compass would when you're in the nether, and what can you do to sort of tune this compass to point in a specific direction. Well, it's pretty simple. The reason why it's going in a circle like that is that it shows the last place where you died, and so because we haven't died yet, it doesn't show anywhere. But if we do happen to die, like let's say if we just jump off here and we die from fall damage, What'll happen when we respawn, and I just have keep inventory on here for demonstration, you'll notice this compass will start to point in a specific direction. And once the compass is pointing towards the top of your screen, you want to walk that way, although of course avoiding to die again on your way there, because if you die twice, it'll just point to the last place you died, and the information there of where you died, let's say with all your items, would be lost. And that's how you follow the recovery compass, is you go the direction that it points when it is pointing straight forward. So let's say it's pointing this way, that wouldn't mean we would want to go that way, we'd want to go that way when it's just pointing straight forward. Because for instance here it's kind of showing it's to that direction of us, and here it's pointing forward now, we've gotten to a point where as we walk, the compass's position will seem to move. It's always really pointing just towards this cave here, and that's because that's where we died. And so when we get to where we died, we'll know because it'll start pointing one way, then we'll keep walking, it'll instantly flip to the other way. And so if we go in the very center here, we should be able to get to a block where it'll just keep going in a circle no matter where we are on that block. And that block is right here, so we now know we died on this exact block. It does tell you down to the exact block where you died, and this is very useful, because let's say all of our items were here, we could pick those up. And even once you've picked up your items, basically until you die again, this compass will continue to point towards that one spot, which can be really useful, and I'll go more into how to use that later. We may be wondering though, is let's say we die in the nether or the end, does it work there? Well, we will try that one out right now, and I will show you how it functions in alternative dimensions. So here we are in the nether, and as you'd expect a compass to in the nether, it'll sort of just go in a circle randomly. However, Let's say that we had died in the nether, it would actually point to the location where we died. And the same would happen in the end dimension. So this is actually a compass that you can use in the nether dimension, which is quite an interesting feature of the game. I do like that this does not only work in the overworld, as oftentimes players will die in the nether and the end, maybe even more than the overworld, and so because of that, you can find your items no matter where you died. But let's say we're right here in the overworld, of course it'll just kind of point to the actual place where we died, but if we did die in the nether, it wouldn't, let's say, point to the nearest nether portal to show us it's through there, it would just circle randomly. And of course, unfortunately, this item is 100% useless in hardcore, as if you can't die in a world, well, the recovery compass can't show you anything, although I suppose it could be maybe a good decoration for a clock shop or something. So now that you know how it works, what's the best way of utilizing the recovery compass? Because let's say you had it on you and you died, well it wouldn't help, because you don't know where you died if you don't see your pile of items, as recovery compass would be on the ground where you died. So this is not an item that you want to have on you when you are exploring around the world. What you want to do with this kind of item is you want to have it in a place where you could easily grab it once you have died. And of course, now that I've died, it's pointing towards that direction. But this wouldn't do us any good if it was on us when we died. So although this villager may not think so, this is my base, and our spawn point is set here. I have a recovery compass in my item storage, and I also have a recovery compass in my ender chest. You could also have a chest next to the spawn point of your world with a recovery compass, in case your bed was destroyed. Now in this scenario, without having the recovery compass on us, let's say we jump off here and die by accident, of course, this isn't very by accident, but, you know, generally it would be. And here we are. Now all our items are on the ground, and we don't really know exactly where they were when we died. But now that we're back at our spawn point, we can go in here, grab this recovery compass, or this recovery compass, whichever one is more convenient. And of course, in your ender chest, maybe you would have a shulker box with some of these in here. And now that we have that, we can grab that the second we spawn in. And we can walk towards where we died, which we can see by where this is pointing is probably at the bottom of the hill. And of course, this recovery compass's info is now confirmed, with these items being on the ground. There is one flaw to the recovery compass, however, and that is it does not show you the Y level of where you died. So let's say you get to a certain point where it says you've died, and maybe that would be right here. You can see you're on that block now, exactly where you died, where it's going to twist in a circle if you orient yourself differently on the block. And because of that, that means that's where we want to dig down. If we are, let's say, dying underground, or if we died, I guess, in a scenario way up in the air, maybe if you have an underground base. And so what we can do is we could just dig down here as we know the Y level is correct. Of course, we can make this safer 
by digging between two blocks like this, but whatever you do, you want to make sure that you have that Y level correct before you dig down. And so maybe in your item saving kit, you could have an efficient pickaxe so you can find where you died, then dig down where you died if it's in a cave. And that's actually one of the biggest uses of this, is if you die in a cave, I found usually when I die, I can get my items back. The problem though is when you die in a cave, oftentimes you want to just, you know, dug straight there, so it'll be through a complicated tunnel. But however, with the recovery compass, you can go above the cave, find out where that is, and then safely find the location where you died. And let's say in this scenario, maybe it was down there, then we could find that safely. And of course, you know, there would still be dangers down there, but we could grab that without having to just meander around and wander around in these caves endlessly before our items despawn, as I've had that happen before. And it's always annoying to finally find out the location where you were when you died, only to see that your items have despawned right in front of you. And so fundamentally, this works best for any scenario where you died, but you do not know exactly where you died or really at all where you died. Maybe a light flight exploring could work well, because even if an area isn't loaded in the world, like let's say we died 100,000 blocks away from here, we could still see generally where to go and we could fly or walk towards that direction. If maybe you were exploring with Elytra and hit a block in the air and died. And of course that makes the same sense in end rating, as you probably are not marking down the exact coordinates of where you are. But if you do, of course, this wouldn't be super useful. But if you weren't and you were killed by a shulker in an end city there, you could wait for as long as you want because your items aren't going to despawn until you're there. However, you would be able to grab them once you have the supplies because you'll know the location of your death. And a bit of important information on death and dying and items despawning. Basically, when you die, your items are going to be there floating around, kind of spewed out from where you had died and they're going to stay there for exactly five minutes, but that's five minutes of being loaded. So let's say we'd walked all the way over here, just within distance of these entities being rendered by the game. So for instance, let's say we we're all the way over there at the edge of that mountain. These probably wouldn't despawn, but of course if we're nearby, they could. So for instance, that's what makes the cave example so deadly for your items despawning. And now once they're here again, that's exactly five minutes and then you can find those without any issue. Interestingly enough, the only difference to this rule is the nether star, because the nether star has a 10 minute timer before it despawns. And I think the reason for this is after you fought the wither, you wouldn't have to worry so much of after that massive fight and all that effort, all your time would just go to waste because that would despawn. And because of that as well, this actually won't be destroyed by explosions, although most items will. And so that's a good thing to know if you're worried where, let's say, another star was on you and you died. At very least, that item will certainly not despawn, at least probably not before you get there, because of that rule of it taking 10 minutes before it disappears. Alright, so those are the standard uses of the recovery compass. However, there are some secret uses of this that make it a much more worthwhile item than just simply a compass that points to the last place you died. So the first use is a secret chest, sort of like a personal buried treasure. What we're going to do is we're going to dig down two blocks and place down a chest, then put some valuable items in here, maybe our nether star. Then we'll put a block back on top, because of course we don't want anyone to see this and this would grow over with dirt later on. Maybe even to put a flower on top just to make it even less suspicious, just so, you know, no one's really going to find this. Alright, so once you've buried it, you can let's say pile up, maybe you could shoot yourself with an arrow, get a dispenser to shoot you, or you could have maybe fire or lava. Just a method that wouldn't necessarily destroy your items, so for instance fire and lava isn't a good idea and the goal would be to die on the exact block where you had buried that treasure. So for instance right here. Now that that's happened, we can go over here and grab all of our items again. And of course you'd want to get rid of any marker that would show that there is something there. So like in this scenario, this obvious big purple pillar we'd want to get rid of. And now that that is out of the way, we have a fully functioning personal treasure map. Because this compass will point us to the exact block where that treasure was buried. As of course it's really pointing to where we died but that would also be this location. And the great thing about this too is, let's say a different player grabs this compass, that compass would point to where that player had last died, if they'd ever died, and so it'll only work where you're holding it, making it completely safe from, let's say, someone stealing it. And so in this scenario, we could point towards this direction, find out which block this starts cycling around in a circle at. It might be this block, or it might be this block, it looks like it's this one. We can again tell because that's going in a full circle instead of, let's say here, we just sort of point in the same direction. And then we can dig down one block and every single time grab our treasure out of the chest here without any issue of having someone steal it. And you don't have to keep this at treasure, you could have this be a secret entrance to a base that's buried, you could have this be maybe a little redstone lever to a contraption you want hidden, or you could even just use 
use it to remember where something is. If you're not in hardcore mode and don't have a lot of XP, there's really no negative to dying in Minecraft, and so using the recovery compass in combination with dying, you can have an amazing personal marker. But of course, the only downfall of this is that if you do die, that information is lost forever. And so just be aware to be extra careful when you have something marked out with the recovery compass, but even temporarily, it can be good for remembering where something is. And also, I would always suggest if you're away from your base, just to set up a little bed next to where you're going to die, so you can respawn right next to there, then break your bed and continue on, without having to go all the way back to grab your items. There's another item in the game that does something similar, and that is the lodestone. Let's just compare these two things. We put this lodestone down in a secret base and right click on it with a compass. We now have a lodestone compass, but let's also do another thing where we die down here and we have our recovery compass pointing here. So now both those compasses are pointing towards our secret base and we will now make this fully hidden by placing that block on top. Now let's say we're over here and we have maybe both these items in a chest and someone who is not us gets a hold of the lodestone compass. Well, that lodestone compass will still They'll point them right to the secret base, to that secret location. Of course, there's the benefit of having multiple places to multiple lodestone compasses, but for something very secret, this is really a dead giveaway to where something is, and it can be stolen by anyone. However, with the recovery compass here, if someone else held it, they could not know. And so we have two compasses pointing to the same direction, but one definitely being safer than the other. And that's a great way of marking out a secret base as well. There's even some mini games I'm sure you could make with the recovery compass, as it is such a unique item with mechanics in it that really aren't anywhere else in the game. Hope you enjoyed this all-encompassing video. Goodbye.